All right, guys, welcome in here. This is episode number one in the mindset movement. Okay, I'm super, super pumped to get this one out here. Uh, episode number one here, this is really, really difficult to do um, because, you know, what do I do? Do I talk about myself and how great I am or do I talk about, you know, like an overview of everything I'm going to be talking about? I think I'm going to mix it up a little bit here. Um, but the very, very first thing that I want to, the point I want to get across is, is the fact that there's two steps to learning. We're just going to jump right into it. There's two steps to learning in this world. Okay. And I want to explain this first because, uh, you know, so many people skip over this fact and they think that getting a mentor is enough. It's not. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to explain this to you. So there's two steps to learning. Obviously there's, there, there's the actual learning side of it, right? Like getting the knowledge and then, uh, you actually have the experience side of it. So, if I were to create the next Amazon and I had Jeff Bezos mentoring me, Bezos, whatever his name is, <laughs> uh, that'd be great, it'd be awesome, learn a lot, of, probably a lot of good things, but I'm not gonna be able to succeed with just knowledge alone. Try and follow me, because I haven't. You have to go out and experience stuff on your own, and you have to fail, which leads me right into my next thing that I want to explain to you here, is that uh, there's a startup curve. Okay, and I, I, I cover this subject a lot, whether it's on my, my Instagram page, Facebook page, my blog, YouTube, whatever. Uh, the startup curve is, is, is a universal principle that's going to happen to anybody who starts a business or, or does something new, right? Like, this is how the startup curve uh, goes. Let me, let me lay this out. I'm moving a little quick for myself. So picture it as, you know, you got a happy chart. A happiness chart where at the top obviously is the most happy the bottom is the, the least happy or or succeeding failing call it that so before you start this is this is the very first phase right so before you start you know you're neutral you're not mad you're not sad you're not winning you're not losing because you haven't started yet then you come up across something that really really intrigues you and and some of you guys watching here uh might be watching me because you've you've been going through my trainings on 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 uh, Shopify drop shipping and you've seen that I'm able to generate you know hundred thousand dollars a month or whatever and uh, you know your your the next phase would be your initial enthusiasm right so you're thinking to yourself dude if Zach's able to do that like and, and he's giving me all his content for free then then I can generate a hundred thousand dollars a month within the next two to three months and and you could but realistically it's not gonna happen so right now your initial enthusiasm will be through the roof but as soon as you start reality is gonna set in you're gonna crash and burn hard and uh, it's just something that has to be done. You know, there's a few unicorns out there of people who don't crash and burn. But, uh, you know, you start initial enthusiasm, you crash and burn. And that's where I got to bring up the, back to main, the main point. The very first thing I was talking about there is that there's two steps to learning. You know, so it's good to know what you're doing so that when you do crash and burn, um, you can just work and grind and you can focus on experimenting and pivoting and uh, trying to bring yourself back out of the hole because once you're at rock bottom right you're not going to be able to afford to give any more time or any more money towards learning because you're so deep in in the hole on uh time and learning or, i'm sorry time and money already uh that you're not going to be able to afford to give any more time to learning or give any more money towards learning right so it's important to know what you're doing before you start this is why i always preach that you need a mentor if you don't have a mentor uh you, you're going to fail it's impossible to win it's literally impossible to win. And then, you know, after the experimenting pivoting phase, uh, you're going to come across something where you think something is going to work. It's going to pull you out of the hole. And this is any business. Not I'm not talking just Shopify, drop shipping. This is literally any business. You're going to come up with something after your rock bottom. You think it's going to work. And then, boom, you just crash a little bit more, uh, you know, and then that really determines who you are as an entrepreneur right there or a business owner, right? Are you a winner or are you a loser? Plain and simple. Uh, winners keep going no matter what they don't make excuses they're accountable for their own actions uh, you don't blame blame your losses on somebody else you own it and you keep going if you're a loser you stop and you quit and I'm not gonna sugarcoat it that's exactly how it is uh, so after you decide that you're gonna be a winner and you keep going uh, you're gonna keep testing obviously it's part of the testing phase experimenting phase uh, stuff stuff's gonna start to work right and then your product gonna fit in the market and then once it fits in the market that's when you scale okay when you scale uh, 
uh, it's going to offset all of your losses time and money wise tenfold because there is two currencies in this world and the world only teaches us that there's one the world teaches us society teaches us that there's only one currency money right but there's two okay there's time and money and this is what the top one percent where the rich people in the world understand um, that the average person just doesn't they don't teach us this stuff in school it's that there's two currencies in this world there's your time and there's your money and you need to invest them both to get the both back out right so if you want a lot of money right you got to invest it so that you can get a lot of money back you got to invest a lot of money if you want a lot of time you got to invest a lot of time to get a lot of time back right makes sense that's why I started business because I wanted to invest my time young and then get a bunch of time back when I'm older okay brief explanation there you know a lot of people are gonna come at you and say I got the best content in the world you know everything I'm everything I'm gonna tell you is gonna be great and and fine maybe they do uh, but my stuff is actually going to be valuable and I'm gonna give you some pointers right here on this podcast that you're not gonna find anywhere else um, I would be willing to bet that probably two or three things over the next 10 to 15 minutes I'm gonna tell you you're not gonna find anywhere else you know I don't believe in charging for my content or my courses and this was a big debate I had up in my head you know do I charge for it or, or don't I charge for it when I did the moral breakdown uh, it's it's better to just give it away for free because that's the way the universe works man if uh, if, if you want you have to give first you know giving is the most selfish thing you can do and I'm not doing it specifically so I can be selfish and get something back out of it like I genuinely enjoy helping people but with that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna stop rambling, guys. <laughs> there's, there's zero editing on this. Uh, this is all completely uncut, uh, one straight frame. Um, unless I, you know, I might edit it if I swear, because I do have, uh, I tend to have no filter when I talk. I'm, I'm a little more reserved right now because this is the very first one um, in the series here that I'm doing. But uh, you know, future videos, you'll probably hear a lot of beeps or, or whatever, whatever I put over top of. Uh, the swear words and everything so tenth, tenth cup of coffee they love it okay so my claim to fame here is uh i don't even think i've introduced myself yeah we're eight minutes deep my name's zach zach hall uh, i've generated lots of money online uh very very plain cutthroat simple keep my description short because uh, that's all you really care about right you don't care to hear about how oh you i was a 17 year old kid who got kicked out of his parents house after graduating high school and had a struggle you've heard that story before all you care to know is that i'm a guy that knows what he's talking about um and and, and i make a lot of money online but let me tell you this i'm not charging you anything i'm giving you all of my content all of my content that i have that's really really valuable that's helped me generate um, over a million dollars alone uh, the first five months of uh 2019 alone I'm giving it for free because that's just what you do when you have something good like I said the most selfish thing you can do is give it back for free so let me jump into point number one here marketing a lot of people over here uh, probably are finding me maybe for my strategy on uh, how I'm able to generate so much money with Facebook ads for for drop shipping and uh, you know it could this this Facebook ad uh, marketing strategy will work for uh, you know any other business you're running to like it's not just strictly that but a very very common thing in the drop shipping community that you see a lot of people doing it drives me nuts this is actually why I had to come out with a, with a free course that I got up on YouTube for uh, you know point a or, or from start start to finish on how to win with uh, Shopify drop shipping like I had to come out with it because there's so many courses out there that teach the wrong stuff like there's only a few things across every single course that I've been through that actually is like good valuable content so like there's a big need in the market like people are not teaching the right stuff and that's most courses not just Shopify but the Facebook ads little little tip that I'm gonna give you here is that single interest ad sets don't work everybody teaches it and it doesn't work and let me explain it I want to keep this video um, or if you're listening on podcast here I want to keep it short so you know you can stay engaged and listening because if I ramble for too long you're just gonna click off right you're gonna go do something else now, Facebook ads do not work when you run them as single interest ad sets. Why? Because Facebook is an auction platform. It's common sense. 
people teach this but what what happens is if you're marketing for a product right that's in uh, the automotive industry we'll take the automotive industry for example and you're gonna do a single interest ad set where you target uh, cars and you do another interest where you target uh, vehicles right the people overlap there's an option in Facebook audiences where you can actually test the overlap against each other and uh, like you're literally bidding to like win the same audience between these single interest ad sets most people teach you know do 10 like dude you're literally bidding against yourself when you do this strategy because Facebook's a bidding platform by default unless you truly know how to run the Facebook ads game uh, Facebook is gonna have your your bid set to a lowest cost per conversion none of these gurus or influencers out there actually teach you um, anything to do with the bids they just say just leave it at lowest cost per per purchase or bid or whatever it's called and what this does is when you're doing these single interest ad sets you're bidding against yourself right so you're bidding against your other ad sets to win the audience of the same exact person so these single interest ad sets let me kind of backtrack a little bit they they work very very uh, first off rarely and uh, they die very very quick because what happens is sure you might be getting a purchase at uh, let's use an example here five dollars and then uh, after the five dollars uh, a day or two later then your, your bid jumps up to 10 and then 20 after a couple more days and then and then 50 after a couple more days and then 100 because it's a, a lowest cost per purchase bid and, and it's the same exact people you're bidding in the audience for right so uh, if it's a lowest cost it just pretty much says hey Facebook spend as much money as you need to in order to get the sale so Facebook's like okay we'll take your money no problem they're good at that so you're just gonna keep bidding yourself up and that that was just the one point I want to get on here like I teach a lot about this subject guys marketing is super super broad um, especially Facebook as there's a lot of different ways to do things um, that's just the one point that I that I see a lot of people out there um, doing and I wanted to disclose that in the very first video because I know the majority of the people you that are watching or listening to this episode are, are not going to be viewing any other content of mine and uh, you know that's fine I just want to get something across that you can take with you after you leave that's going to be valuable to you okay but before we go any farther make sure to subscribe uh, you know like 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 this post like this episode uh, you know share it with somebody because share this share another one because the stuff I'm putting out here guys is very very valuable like I said you're not gonna find this content anywhere else that Facebook ad strategy alone right now it's it's June 14th 2019 and I can guarantee you that not a single course out there um, is teaching people to do that Facebook ad strategy and and that's not the way to do it and you might be asking well what is the way to do it you stack the interest within one ad set because when you stack them on top of each other like you put instead of 10 different ad sets right you put them all you put 10 interests within one ad set when you put everything within one ad set it excludes any overlap that's how it works and there's a little more in depth to it but we're gonna keep it brief uh, check out some other videos here or, or some other podcasts like we talk heavily on this subject guys I bring people in on, on my podcast here I talk with uh, some of the top experts in in, in, the, in their respective markets about different categories you know we talk sales we talk heavy into marketing uh, you know search engine optimization SEO uh, you know I'm, I'm big 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 on sales in general right like I was saying and, and that has to do with uh, like the mere exposure effect which we're gonna get into in a second because again I'm gonna save you thousands and thousands of dollars on courses with sales alone and I'm gonna explain literally the only thing you need to know about sales but first uh, we, we also go over credit and I'm gonna give you a very good credit tip here that will increase your credit tremendously uh, within the next 30 days we'll, we'll say 30 to 45 days literally from the action that you're gonna to do today um, but back to sales the one key that you need to know about sales that nobody talks about people talk about it I guess briefly but they don't really explain the science behind it people will just come to you and say uh, make a bunch of points of contact right or you got to talk to people make sure you get out there knock on a million doors um, and then you'll eventually sell something right there's more to sales uh, the, the, 
there's more to more to sales we'll say and there's more to that principle that they're teaching so the backbone to sales is a psychology principle called the mere exposure effect and the mere exposure effect literally means um, I don't want to explain this or familiarity principle it's called too uh, it's 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 literally you making contact with with somebody multiple times whether it's positive or negative just repeated exposure um, to a person multiple times and then they will eventually uh, subconsciously like you they'll trust you and they will resonate with you which will make them prefer you or be attracted to you right and uh, that's how you sell the mere exposure effect the familiarity principle like if you don't have multiple points of contact with people then your sale is a gamble you know I, I come from a car dealership uh, background like I used to sell a bunch of cars and you know I thought I knew sales but I didn't I knew impulse sales right which is literally just luck and gamble you know it's funny what when it comes to car dealerships I see a lot of uh, car dealer or uh, car salesmen think they're the greatest salesman in the world which I got nothing but respect for them because I know what they have to deal with Selling cars is a bunch of bullshit, dude. Most times, I feel really bad for a lot of people in that industry because it's a trap, okay? But when it comes to selling cars, that's defensive sales, right? Or, or selling furniture or whatever you're selling. In a, if you're selling something in a store, um, it's defensive sales. Like, people are coming into your territory, right? They're a zebra walking into a lion pack. But when you jump out in the entrepreneurship world on your own and you create your own business, like a consulting business, or you want to run Facebook ads for um, local businesses or whatever, and you have to walk into their uh, place of business, then that's deep or that's offensive sales. Like you're the zebra walking into the lion pack. Like you're gonna have to deal with a lot more objections. That's true sales. Big, big, big difference. Um, you know, like starting at a car dealership or selling furniture or, or whatever, customer service. That's a good place to start, but just don't get it twisted. That's not real sales. You know, that's going to hurt some people. That's going to offend some people. That right there is going to probably make some people click off. But the people that are clicking off are about to miss out on some really good points here that I'm going to go over. Uh, so SEO, search engine optimization. Obviously, it's a big, big part to online marketing, right? So everybody, every business nowadays has a website, okay and uh, everybody wants free right we don't want to pay for a bunch of ads but you know there's only so much free you can get at, right but uh, SEO search engine optimization is basically how a uh, search engine like Bing or Google or Yahoo or whatever reads your website and one little tip that you can do is every website has pictures one little trick that you can do to get yourself scaled up higher and this also works if you're selling on Amazon or eBay because those are search engines um, you can save your picture as the keyword you want to target for. So let me look around the room here. If, I, if I'm selling a camera, uh, like I'm using a uh, DSLR Canon Rebel 6 or Rebel T7 camera. Uh, if I wanted to try and list that product online, like on a search engine, or if I just wanted to place it on my website and do a review, then I would uh, save the picture of what I'm talking about or a picture of the camera ironically take a picture of the camera yeah then uh, I would save it as exactly what I want to target so uh, if I wanted to target Canon Rebel T7 camera I would save that keyword as the picture and that actually helps your SEO on your website or your listing on eBay and Amazon whatever you're doing very big tip you can do right there um, guys I got a bunch more of those that's basic maybe a lot of people knew that that wasn't even included in one of the uh, things that I was willing to bet most of you guys <clears throat> didn't know here. Um, that was just one I wanted to throw out because if you're new to SEO, that's one of the first ones you'll run, run across there. That's not advanced stuff. We get way more in depth of, with than that, guys. So, um, you know, I want to get this across too. Uh, really, the big tips coming with credit, and I'm going to try and get into that um, here in a second. But I got a list here. Uh, you can't see it if you're listening on audio. But if you're uh, watching on video, I got a list of points I want to get across in this video. Um, so I got to kind of stick stick to my script. Very unorthodox, guys. I, I don't really put together lists when I'm doing these videos or these recordings. It's just straight off the dome, you know, freestyle talking. Uh, 
whatever happens, happens. I don't even edit it. You know, if you don't like my content, I don't really care because I know there's a lot of people out there that will and they're going to get great value from it. But uh, most people, most entrepreneurs, um, I would say probably like 95% of them are all starting out, right? Because it's constantly people starting out, people quitting. Uh, like we explained the startup curve earlier, like you have to fail before you can succeed. Uh, we, we, that was brief. But most people out there are starting entrepreneurs. So maybe like a lot of the content I'll put out here is for, for starters or people who are, you know, a couple years deep like I am. Um, but the most common thing most people think when they start off, there's two things that we're going to touch on here. But the, the, most impl- the most common thing that people think when they're starting off a business is, okay, I'm going to start with this. I'm going to completely automate this business. And then uh, I'm going to move on and create another business. I'm going to automate that, move on and create another one until I have seven automated businesses, right? The average millionaire, for those of you who can't see, there's air quotes there. The average millionaire has seven streams of income, right? So if I want to be a millionaire, I just got to create seven businesses and automate them. That's not how it works. If you try to automate your business 100% where you separate yourself from that business, that business will fail because learn this early. I was about to say young. Learn this early. The definition of business is problem solving. So if you separate yourself from the business, you're not going to be seeing those problems that are rolling in. And you are going to go belly up. You're going to drown alive. and implode and you're going to tip, tip over. Okay? Don't do it. I've been down that road. Do not do it. And I know many other people have tried too. Uh, it's a common misconception. So, uh, you know, like I said, I've generated over a million dollars first five months of, of 2019 alone. And I say generated. That doesn't mean profit. That's, uh, you know, sales and everything from my businesses. Um, pretty much what I did to do that this year uh, was trading like micro niches or, or small brands and I sell off to a bigger brand. So I'm doing drop shipping stores and uh, you know I make a little bit of money on the way up. We do pretty good with like 20 to 25% profits. But what we're really doing is we're growing information. Uh, like we're growing uh, information within our Facebook tracking pixel and we're growing uh, large email lists and text message lists and we're selling off to bigger brands. They buy exclusive rights to the website and the brand and everything and that's that's pretty much what we're doing that for. Uh, a lot of people get that twisted too <laughs> with uh, the approach on Shopify. That's a, again, very big subject. I have, I think over a hundred videos right now on YouTube just on that subject alone. So you'll have to check those out. But uh, you know, that, that I just wanted to explain there who the f- I am. You know, I briefly said earlier, you know, I was kicked out at 17 you know, forced to survive. You know, it was not an easy road for me. But I, I, I didn't say when I got kicked out, like, sure, I was pretty upset about it, but I wasn't, I was, I was a bad kid. It was not like a bad, bad kid. Like I was doing drugs all the time and I was fighting, but like, I just had a bad head on my shoulders, very hot headed, uh, very opinionated. And I would talk a lot and I had a tendency to people off. Um, still have it a little bit today, getting a little bit better, but you know, it was my own doing on why I got kicked out. So don't feel bad for me. But when I was when I when I when it happened, I was uh, you know obviously pretty hurt by it, upset, whatever. But that was probably the best thing that's ever happened to me because that made me grow up a little bit. I actually had to start fending for myself, and uh, you know I was out there you know trying to kick ass in this world, and I I, I fell I, I kept falling on my face multiple times over and over again, and uh, what kind of happens? What I realized is failure is inevitable. It's gonna happen. And when you fail, just just fall forward. Denzel Washington said it best. Fall forward because you know it's gonna hurt a hell of a lot less when you when you fall forward and and you can brace yourself hitting the ground, right? But when you fall backwards, you know you can't see what's behind you. You can't brace yourself backwards, and you're just gonna smack your dome on the ground. So when you fail, fail big and fail forward. Now. Um, I'm going to save this credit tip for, for last year. What do we got? I got one more point I want to get across to you. Uh, and this is going to tie right in with the credit tip. So the second most common question uh, people have when they're starting out, and, and like I said earlier, we have two. Uh, this is the second one. 
Common question when you're starting out, not just Shopify dropshipping, in any business or anything people get into, they always have the question, how much money does it take? And the answer is the same for every single industry, but the answer is also different for every industry. Let me explain what I'm talking about here. Every industry is gonna require a, or business you start is gonna require a different amount of money, right, that you're gonna to need to get into it, but they're all the same because you're not gonna use any real money, okay? You don't need any real money to start a business. You just need access to that money. That's called OPM, other people's money. This is how the rich get richer. Um, like, let's use uh, Donald Trump, for example. He's, he's a pretty popular guy, right? You see him in the news a lot. Um, <laughs> again, I'm not a politically based person. I should probably disclose that. I don't really care about politics. Um, I got to respect Trump because he's an insane salesman. Uh, you know, look at what he did with the mere exposure effect to win um, the 2016 election. Uh, you know, for those of you that are listening during or after maybe like the 2020 election, a year and a half before that's going to happen in my time when I'm recording this and I am already predict well not even predicting I'm guaranteeing that Trump won the election like he's the only person running <laughs> because the mere exposure effect he's just getting everybody to talk about him that's why he started a war with with the media because that's literally even if it's positive or negative negative exposure people are still talking about him Right, so he's got the world talking about him nonstop. He's a, it's it's genius, it's the smartest thing you do in sales. Uh, but let's get back to the credit thing here. So the credit tip and hack that I wanted to teach you here, um, and I w I purposely left this to the end, um, because I know not everybody's gonna make it here to the end. And uh, this is for the winners. This is for people who truly do make it to the end. Now, try and follow me because a lot of people. Society, again, is going to teach you, the world's going to teach you that credit cards are bad. And they are if you use, use them to buy um, liabilities, like stuff that's not going to put money back into your pocket. So there's a li liabilities or anything in this world that won't put money back in your pocket, and an asset is something that will put money back in your pocket. But for this instance, uh, this credit tip or hack, we're going to call it, is uh, for authorized users. Okay, So you can... Uh, actually do this i've done this this is how i've blown my credit up and got i've been able to get access to some massive cards uh, i don't have them in here but that's okay some massive cards that uh you know you have to have uh, a lot of money coming in for or, or high credit uh, high credit age whatever and you can you can do it too like literally in 30 days or 45 days just depends on the reporting date for when you do this so the credit tip is buying access to an authorized user on somebody else's credit card. So you can get yourself listed under somebody else's credit card as an authorized user, and uh, after the next credit reporting date, when that's, on, when that's reporting to your credit, you actually acquire over um, all of their credit, right? So these cards you would get through uh, different brokerages, uh, website I use quite regularly, and I'll try and put it down in the link if it's available for me to do. Uh, Website I use is tradelinesupply.com, and you can go on there and you can uh, buy access to these. Uh, they're labeled as donor cards, and uh, they'll list you as an authorized user on it. And then after, we'll say 30 days, once you buy it and it reports to your credit, you acquire all that credit to your credit report, and uh, it boosts you up through the roof. Okay, now how, how am I saying it boosts you up through the roof? Picture yourself, we're going to put an example out there because this is something that's going to fit a lot of people's lives. So, most people try to avoid credit cards because they're told they're bad, right? Don't get a credit card, 25% interest rates. You're going to drown alive if you get them. Again, careful who you take money advice from uh, or financial advice from. Take it from somebody that actually has something that you want. Okay? Uh, but Anyways, I'm getting off track here. The, when, when you buy it into an authorized user program, you get access to, uh, not access to like use the credit. Like you can't use it, don't get that twisted. Like you can't buy and get on these cards and then they'll send you a card in the mail and you just get away scot-free uh, using all this person's card running it up, all their credit running it up. But uh, you acquire that credit to your credit report. Like it reflects on your credit report, averages out every everything with it too. So. 
for this instance, we're going to put an example out there. Imagine that you have two credit cards for yourself right now. Okay, they each have one thousand dollar limit. So right now you have a total uh, revolving credit limit of two thousand dollars. Okay, I'm a visual person, but right now as I go, I guess. So two thousand dollars between two cards. Uh, that means on average you got a thousand um, per credit um, file reporting there or credit account reporting. So let's say each one of those accounts, those two, those two accounts have uh, two years of age each. That means your, your average credit, uh, your average credit limit is of $1,000 and your average age on your, on your credit is two years. Okay. Now you can go to tradelinesupply.com. You can break stuff down and, and uh, you can buy these cards. It just depends. They, there's all different kinds on there, but I mean, you can break it down for, uh, you know how much their credit limit is that you that you want to buy access to. So if you want to buy access to a card that has uh, twenty thousand dollars in limit and ten years in age, okay, you buy that. That'd run you like let's say eight hundred bucks. So you buy that. It reports over your credit eight hundred bucks. What's going to happen? So if it's twenty thousand dollars, you're going to acquire that twenty thousand dollars over your credit report, which is going to get added to the two thousand dollar limit that you currently have okay and before i get that let me let me let me back up just one step another credit tip uh if that two thousand dollar limit that you have is completely maxed out okay a credit report when you're over ten percent credit utilization that's right there's the six different uh categories that determine what your credit is if your credit utilization is over 10% for every single percent over 10% um, that takes away one point from your credit so if you have a hundred percent credit utilization okay hundred percent credit utilization then that means you have 90 points that just got subtracted from your credit report so what's gonna happen when you buy this card you're gonna be adding twenty thousand dollars to your um, $2,000 total limit, right? So now you have a total of $22,000 in credit limits reporting to your credit. Uh, so your utilization is going to drop down to, uh, yeah, be like 9%. You're going to have $2,000 of, of the 22000 utilized, and it's going to drop your credit utilization down to 9% or a little bit above 9%. I'm not super good at math, um, which means you're going to get right off the bat right there you're gonna get 90 points added to your credit report and uh, then you're also gonna acquire the age of that card so if that cards 10 years old right and 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 your average credit age right now is is one year then uh, you're gonna have well it's basic math you add it up one year for one card one year for the other card that's two years plus ten that means you have three accounts open uh, the total of all those would be yeah 12 so 12 divided by 3, so now your credit age is going to jump from an average of, um, well, hold on a minute. Our example actually earlier was, was two years, so we'll do it off that so you don't get confused. Uh, so each, each of those cards is, is two years age, right? And then the one we just bought for the example is uh, 10 years. So 2 plus 2 plus 10 is 14, which when you divide that by 3, because you have three accounts now reported to your credit, right? Uh, when you divide that by three, it's going to be 4.6 continuous. Yeah. So your credit age is going to jump from two years on average up to just over four and a half. Okay. So right there, if you go and buy access to an authorized user card, like you literally are going to jump your credit through the roof. And that's what I did. You know, I literally only spent $400 on my first authorized user card. That's it. 400 bucks. And it jumped my credit. My credit wasn't bad, but it jumped my credit from, um, it was like a 702 or 703, 704, something like that. Uh, jumped it from that all the way up to a 792. Like literally within a month. It was the most insane thing I've ever seen. And at this point, um, I'd already started to get some credit cards going because I play the credit game pretty, pretty heavy. So, I mean, I was having cards that had like $5,000 limits. And as soon as that stuff hit my... Um, credit report like I got a million alerts on my phone saying hey your credit lines have all been increased you've been increased you've been increased like I was auto getting an increase for all these insane trade lines 
And like right now, guys, I have access to like five hundred thousand dollars in in trade lines just through credit cards. I don't use them um, because I don't need to right now uh, because I'm purely only doing content related stuff. But you know, that it's pretty vitally important when you're starting out. You, you don't need real money. Just when you're starting out, get access to cards, recycle your money, and never never pay the interest on it. Like you can move your money multiple times like if you get you know, four, four five six different credit cards you can keep cycling money and never pay interest on it right opm baby we love it uh you know there's a couple tips there guys i, I wanted to like bring some uh, r8 value here in the first video to you uh, that credit one's big you know i got a bunch of stuff we're gonna go over here you know i'm giving away the entire farm as they would say uh, i'm literally holding nothing back like I'm in it to build a brand. I, I firmly believe that within the next 15 years, we're gonna have two different economic falls, specifically here in the US. Uh, one of them is gonna be within the next two years. I'm predicting the housing market's gonna crash again. Um, so the one thing that is not ever gonna fail for you is your own personal brand. Okay, so that's why I'm focusing so heavy on this. And I'm gonna prove you, and again, this this is being recorded. This exact video, and I want to I want you, I want to prove to you that the mere exposure effect works right now. If you're listening to this, today is June 14th, 2019, 3:24 p.m. If you do, if you know who I am, if you've seen me on Facebook ads, uh, you see me on on YouTube before, you see my following, whatever. That's proof the mere exposure effect works. Okay because I am just doing non-stop content posting. And I'm willing to bet the very first time you see me, you thought I was just some other guru trying to sell you something. I got nothing to sell you, period. Don't want to, okay? The mere exposure effects works. You gotta make five to eight points of contact with somebody before they'll actually take you seriously and they'll listen to you. And that's exactly what probably happened with you. You've seen me multiple times, multiple times, multiple times, and then, you know, right around maybe like the 10th time or maybe a little bit before eighth time, whatever, then you actually wanted to check me out. Like, okay, what's this guy about? I'm seeing him multiple times, multiple times, but you know, it wasn't until you seen me a bunch of times um, that you actually started to trust me or, or at least listen to me and then gave me a shot to like come over and listen to my podcast or uh, watch my YouTube videos or whatever it is. But uh, that's how it works, guys. So. You know, if, if you see my stuff blowing up right now, then that's proof that you need to listen to what I'm putting out here because, uh, guys, I know what the f I'm talking about. Like, I put some good stuff out there. I, a lot of secrets. A lot of people are really, really upset that, that I'm putting content out that's, uh, you know, more valuable than their courses. But, you know, that's just the way I believe it should be. You know, give that stuff away for free. And I actually have a pretty good... Uh, uh, blog over there and a, and a video of uh, why you should be giving your stuff away for free because I break it down because uh, not only is it going to get you like way more in return from the universe but it actually uh, you make more money I know it's a crazy concept uh, but it all you make more money you just got to go check out that video um, or that blog or wherever you want to view the content at from me you make you make more money with it from ad revenue and affiliation links and stuff you just got to check it out. It's a crazy concept. But, guys, make sure to subscribe to, you know, my, my, my Snapchat or, and my, my Instagram, my Facebook page, my podcast, uh, especially YouTube. Like, just because I put one piece of content here, right, on, on YouTube, for example, that doesn't mean uh, I'm going to put every piece of content on YouTube. Like, I might only put certain stuff on uh, podcasts. Or I might only put certain stuff on my Instagram page. Uh, you know, there's different requirements for different platforms, so I can't always put everything on every single place. But every single video, every piece of content I'm putting out there, guys, is good quality stuff. And I'm not going to be the guy that's going to be, again, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not going to be the guy who's going to be preaching in your ear, mindset, mindset, mindset. Uh, you know, you got to stay positive. Just as long as you don't quit, you're going to win. Like, that's cool like it gets really annoying and repetitive seeing every single entrepreneur say that entrepreneur um but i'm giving out good stuff guys like if i'm not gonna waste my time yelling that at you because you already know that 
Like I'm here to give you tips and tricks that is going to hack your life and, 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 and blow you into the stratosphere. I mean, I don't know how to convey this uh, any better than I am. Like it's good stuff. I'm not just saying that. Like if you want to like, what's, what's Grant Cardone say? If you want to 10X your life, like literally listen to what I have to say because it will blow you up. Guys, that's all I have here for episode number one. Make sure you subscribe. Like I said, cross the board, all those channels. I got the links down in the description. Uh, we'll see you guys over here on episode two. Thanks for watching.